and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Today I'm going to give you my report from Scale Model World 2024 in Telford, but from a slightly different perspective, that of a trader. Now I've had the shop for just over a year now, and originally I had no intent of going to Telford as a trader, but after talking to some people and thinking about it, I changed my mind and decided to go purely from an awareness and advertising point of view. So the first step on this journey was this, the IPMS Trader Form for Scale Model World. This is publicly available from the IPMS for anyone that wants to exhibit at the show, so I'm not breaking any trade secrets here. Being a one-man band sole trader, with very limited funds, I booked the smallest available stand I could. I also needed public liability insurance for the event for at least £5 million. There are many companies that provide exhibition and event cover, so I got this ordered too, since you need proof of this to be able to get in and set up as a trader. I designed some pop-up displays and banners, and got these printed. Checking things out, I found that one of my pop-up stands was faulty, meaning it wouldn't stand up, and contacted the print company's customer service, saying I needed a replacement by Friday, as the show was at the weekend. They were great, immediately saying that they would send a replacement by express delivery. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and the stand arrived on Monday after my return. In any case, I packed up and left. Later than I wanted, because of that expected delivery not turning up, and made the three and a bit hour journey to the Telford Exhibition Centre. I got there just after 6pm and started setting up. Unfortunately, where I was in the bottom of corner of Hall 2, I was miles away from any entry point, and so had to lug all of my boxes the entire length of the hall. It certainly helped to my step count for the weekend anyway. In the end I had decided to take some of my second-hand stock with me, as well as some larger kits and some paint sets in addition to sprue glue and man's magic levelling thinner. With most of my setup done, I decided to go and take a look at the new Airfix Lysander and Sea King, since they were just around the corner from me. I have to say the Lysander looks really nice, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one, and maybe sprucing up the interior a little too, since it's so visible. The HC4 was also looking really good, and I tend to agree with Moss that separating out the announcement of the Lysander and the HC4 a little would have been good, because the HC4 did get rather overshadowed in the announcements. I think that's a shame, because this kit has some new parts for this version, and with the four options provided I can see people building more than one if you're a Seeking fan. Okay, 7.34 or so, just arrived at the apartment place, so got most of the stuff sorted for the stand, it took me just over an hour, so not too bad. This place is pretty nice, it's, a little, uh, it's the apart hotel at the Ironworks, it's got a little kitchen back here, which is quite nice, tea and coffee and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try and meet John now, and uh, I'll come back tomorrow. See you guys then. Twelve hours later, in the morning, we're all kitted up, ready to go, and uh, face Scale Model World. Little dominoes there from last night. Uh, stuff packed up there, ready. So let's get off. And this is what Telford looks like on the Saturday morning before anybody gets in.
So this is me all set up after this time, and there's a pretty friendly atmosphere throughout the traders, as in many exhibitions. We're all here for the same reason after all. The guys next to me from MDP let me put the banner up on the rear of their stand racking, after I couldn't repair the broken pop-up for example. So when I was all set up in the morning, it was time for the show to start proper. This is when you as IPMS members start to arrive, and an hour later the show is open for everyone. Just to give you an idea of how close I was to Airfix, let me just show you around the other side of the wall here, and also give you a view of Hall 1. Now during that first day I didn't eat, drink or go to the toilet for 12 hours straight. The only time I got away was when John Alec and his daughter kindly watched the stand for me whilst I attended the ICM talk Valeria had invited me to. At the end of the show on Sunday I did get a chance to sneak over to the Ravel stand which was just along the wall from me and take a look at the planned Hunter T7, Gloucester Meteor engines and the new Tool F35 the company have coming in 2025. The only other chance I got to go roaming was on the Sunday, when some very kind individuals, you know who you are, looked over the stand whilst I went to grab coffee and then in the afternoon buy a couple of kits. Then before you could blink it was 4pm and time to break down. For me this was pretty good. It took just over an hour to get everything packed up and ferried to the car, but at that time there were still an awful lot of people still working away, and some of them will be there for a couple more hours. Here are some of the Airfix crews still working on breakdown. And I really felt for these people having to pack up all of those scenics. So just time for one last look back at the centre. And then we're back to the car for another three and a half hours to get home. So after all of that, was it worth it? Well, from the point of view of meeting people, absolutely. I met many of you and had some great conversations and that part of the show for me was really rewarding. The other part of it was actually selling goods and hopefully promoting the shop and channel. I won't really know the results of that for some time but let's just have a look at some of the hard economics of Telford for a trader. So firstly I had to pay for the stand, even with the cheapest one available which is a single double depth table, that is two 6x2 tables arranged to form a 6x4 area, that was £225. The two pop-ups and a single banner cost me £100, and exhibition public liability insurance cost me £75 for the weekend, taking it up to £400. I booked a very reasonable apartment for £150 for two nights, bringing the total to £550. The journey was 160 miles each way, plus 12 miles for shuttling to and from the hotel. Taking HMRC rates of 45 pence a mile to account for wear and tear on my car and so on, that's £150 more, bringing us to £700. I didn't actually eat much whilst I was there, but I did go for a curry on the Saturday night with Black Rifle, Moss, John Alec and company, so I spent a very reasonable £50 over the weekend on subsistence. Altogether, that's a total of £750 for the weekend. Now if we assume a healthy profit margin of one third, and I can tell you that's more than I make on the majority of what I sell, that means I would have had to have taken £2,250 just to break even. If you think about companies having discounts and show bargains, then they're not making a third on those, so even if you look at a modest drop to say one quarter or 25%, that means I would have had to have taken £3,000 to break even. Now I can tell you I didn't make a third of that, less than £1,000, so I was actually out of pocket from a business point of view. That means whilst what I took paid my immediate costs, it didn't make the event profitable. 
Of course, I wasn't meaning for it to actually make money, but most businesses are. They also had larger stands, with more staff, higher costs. Many have additional costs as well, like vehicle hire. Something that I need to consider for next year if I want to go bigger. Now just looking at that, let's look back at the cost of these stands, because when I looked at this, it doesn't make much sense. I'll try to visualise this for you, because I think the IPMS are once again screwing this up, especially for the smaller traders. If we look at the number of tables you get against cost, and plot that on a graph, it looks like this. As you can see, there are multiple points on the lower end where the same number of tables cost more money. That's because of these layouts in the rate sheet. Corner tables are not double depth, so the first corner plot has just two tables. That's the same as I had, but obviously on a row corner, giving them more exposure. OK, so let's express this as cost per metre of frontage. And you get this graph, where you have two clear curves, one for straight setups and one for corner setups, with those corners looking like a real bargain. But hang on a minute, because my plot was 10 feet deep, and many of the large bespoke stands utilise that area and don't use the tables at all, so maybe expressing this by area will make more sense. Unfortunately not. As the corner plots don't have that 10 foot depth, they actually suffer in area, meaning they're quite expensive for that increased frontage. Especially when you think a linear plot can use that 10 feet as an inverted side to give them more display area. There are other funky things going on here too, and not just with the prices of the corner layouts. If you ignore any different layouts and just look at the linear plots and the increase in price for each table, it's not linear. Now the first table obviously costs you £225, but going up to two tables, that second costs you an additional £365, 162% of the cost of the first table, whereas adding a third costs an additional whopping £460, more than twice the price of the first table. Bizarrely, the fourth and fifth table's cost goes back down to £365 each, but then the sixth is £380, and then the seventh goes down to £340. The eighth table goes up to a cost of £430, but the ninth costs you only £60 more. This is bonkers. It actually makes it harder for small businesses to invest in this event, since those first tiers are so incredibly expensive. Add to this that many sole traders are not VAT registered, so they're already paying more for their goods, and it seems the IPMS is trying to actively discourage smaller businesses from displaying at scale model world. This is very strange because it is the traders, not the membership, that pay for the event through being there. If I were looking at this through a purely business lens, I'd have to think long and hard about whether this is an event worth being at. That's especially true when there are issues like there were this year around the trader's Wi-Fi network, which was patchy and unreliable. Given that we rely on internet connections to process card transactions, that's just unacceptable. I'd also like to point out that the IPMS make a thing about providing a number of free passes to the event for traders. This is a pretty stupid thing to say. They're not free at all. We have paid for them in the price of the stand, and we don't get to go to the show like a normal member. Saying that a trade pass is worth the same as the £32 membership fee is like saying an elephant in a zoo doesn't have to pay the entry fee. It has no meaning. So for me, Telford 2024 was an interesting learning experience. I had a great time, as always, but I didn't get to see the show at all. I relied on kindness to even get a coffee, let alone buy a couple of kits, so in a way I don't feel like I went to the show. On the other hand, I met a lot of people, far more than in any other year, and I had a great time. Will I do it again? Maybe. It depends how the next few months go whether I want to take the risk of a bigger stand. What I do think, however, is something that I've said before in this video linked here about the IPMS, and that is that it really needs to get its act together on the trade side. Traders pay for this show, not members, and I don't think they are treated particularly well in terms of nonsensical pricing and mediocre service. The IPMS could work much more closely with traders to reduce costs. For example, many of them do not need tables at all, which means higher of these isn't needed, but there's no communication that I'm aware of on this. Stable and accessible Wi-Fi is an essential, not an optional extra, and some of those optional extras, like power, for example, are ridiculously expensive. 
This means that the burden of costs for these types of things falls on larger traders and manufacturers, and these are not free. They will have budgets, and they are all passed on to us as modelers through their products. If they feel that that budget is too high, then they will cut it, meaning loss of revenue and support for shows like this. So I think my summary, for a trade view of scale model world and whether it's worth it, depends on what your view is and why you're going. If you're treating it as awareness and publicity, especially as a medium to large business, it's probably worth doing and you'll write the cost off against tax. If you're a smaller business looking to make profit here, then absolutely not. The cards are heavily stacked against you, and expanding to larger prominence is more expensive for smaller businesses than for larger ones. If you want to encourage smaller businesses, which actually massively mitigates the risk of running a show like this, then the IPMS need to go back and redo their sums. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.